minoxidil. Minoxidil is first approved for blood pressure uh, orally. It was, it's now topical for hair loss and is applied to the scalp, not to the hair. Very important. It is recommended to be applied twice daily. Um, it, there's some thoughts that it, in the skin it can actually have about a 20 uh, hour half-life versus just the four hour serum half-life. So I tell my patients that even if you're going to do it once a day, it's a heck of a lot better than doing it zero. So just something to think about. It comes in two and five percent, do percent doses with the five percent being for men. And, the, and the, there's not really a clear idea of how it works, but the, if you can remember one thing is that it potentially can prolong your antigen phase. Um, and that's something that we'll talk about in just a minute what the importance of that is. It is over the counter. The major side effect in the non-branded version is scalp dermatitis or irritation in an order of maybe about 25%. The branded version, they came out with a foam that only comes in the 5% at this time where they remove propylene glycol. So patients are, that have had sensitivity to the non-branded version, you may want to suggest for them the, to get the branded version that's foam. It's also a little bit easier to style. The other thing that's important is in your first six weeks, because you're actually moving hairs into an antigen phase, you can have a little bit of shedding of the hairs and that's actually a good sign so for so you need to tell that tell your patients that so they don't panic when they see that uh, I do use the 5% in women as well but there is a higher risk of hypertrichosis with that and that's just something a patient uh, should know about the reason I do it is if I really want to more rapidly stabilize them over that first few months to a year I, I like to use the 5% in select women and the idea is that there's been some studies after about a year that the 2 and 5% have very similar clinical efficacy for women after that point. I'm going to skip over that last point. And there is an effect that occurs a little bit earlier, about three months out, you start to see it earlier than finasteride. And as the studies show that there's ongoing improvement over the long run. The, and it, just like finasteride, if you stop using it, you lose everything you gain. Um, this is just talking about, we already covered that. I'm just take a time, I'm going to move forward with this. And I also use it to stabilize telogen. Really, really important. In other words, if a patient has a high risk of shedding um, after surgery, it's a great idea to start a few weeks to a few months before with uh, minoxidil. Patients that have a lot of sun damaged scalp, that their vascularity looks bad, the, the minoxidil could help improve that area a little bit before in a perioperative setting. You do want to stop it a couple days before just because increased vascularity could lead to a little bit more intraoperative bleeding and restart it about seven days post so there's no irritation with the grafts in the early setting. So the idea between finasteride and minoxidil, Amina likes to describe, Amina is working with me as a, a transplant coordinator, likes to talk about like a piano. If, you, if you're playing with one hand or playing with the other hand, it's like playing with both together. And in other words, they work really synergistically uh, together. Dutasteride, I'm not going to spend too much time on. Dutasteride is it, it's a, D, a type 1 and a type 2 5-alpha reductase inhibitor. Market is Avidart for BPH. Um, I really rarely use this on patients, but it's something that it, they've shown that they, it can actually, because it's a both type 1 and type 2 inhibitor, that there can be an increased efficacy with this uh, medicine. And their half-life is much, much longer. The cost is, I think, similar. It's about $2 a pill for this medication. Just got back from Amsterdam and heard some phase 3 clinical trials that showed uh, good clinical efficacy see with this uh, and a very similar side effect profile to, to finasteride. Hormonal therapy, I just want this slide up here because it's so important. If you're going to do hair restoration in women, you really, really need to remember taking uh, care of, uh, I think Danny's going to talk a little bit about this, is just really understand you've got to do some investigative work and not just treat them and not just start transplanting them. And low ferritin levels, um, dihydroepiandrostone sulfate, which is the most predominant female male hormone, uh, uh, male hormone in a, in a woman needs to be checked along with the full range of, of hormones low thyroid levels, any kind of uh, a risk of a, a autoimmune disease, and obviously just a basic chemistry profile. Obviously, there's a lot of stuff and a patient's going to add out on the internet, and I just I always want to be careful when I give a talk, um, not to, to, to say it's good or bad, but just to focus on what's FDA cleared. And so some conclusions here is that, just remember a few things. Finasteride and minoxidil really are synergistic, and they slow down the speeding train of hair loss, whether you're going to do a hair restoration or not. Um, it's really better for the early patient that, doesn't ha that still has those baby hairs or not completely into slick baldness. And think about it in tandem with your hair transplant. If you're having someone with a lot of um, baby hairs or vellus hairs that could be shocked postoperatively, you really want to stabilize those hairs to best your ability in the perioperative setting. Maybe a few months on these medicines will help a lot. And the other thing is the sad thing is if you stop using them, you lose everything you gain. 
Um, and just remember, and women will hear probably from Dr. Russo a little bit more, but just the idea is just remember, don't just transplant them, really investigate that. So course that we're doing in, in St. Louis I'm really proud of. Talk about that <coughs> further. And uh, Danny, do you want to come up and do yours? Sure.